Hi, I'm Craig Davis, General Manager of Addington Palace. Let me show you around. The history of the building really is as rich as it is varied. The main building actually predates the Doomsday Book, or the actual site itself. Reputedly, there was even a hunting lodge here where Henry VIII used to have clandestine meetings with Anne Boleyn. In more recent times, the main house was built in 1776, actually built for a chap called uh, Barlow Trogothic, and he commissioned an architect called Robert Milne to build the house as you see it today. After that, 1805 to 1896, it was the Archbishop's Palace. Six archbishops resided here, five of whom were buried in St Mary's Church in the village. It was a Red Cross building in the First World War, and for 44 years it was home to the Royal School of Church Music. More recently, we've been running as a conference and wedding venue. We do about 100 or so weddings a year. Upon the initial inquiry, when the clients rang up, they'd see our sales manager. And she'd show them around the venue, she'd show them around the palace and the marquee, get a full tour of the building, be told about the history of the palace as well. If they then decide to book, they would then have their own dedicated event manager. Now the beauty of this is it ensures continuity right from the very start. It also allows them to build up a rapport with the event manager. The event manager would see them right through until the day itself. So effectively from conception to birth of the actual function. Something that the palace does offer, which very, very few venues can, is a range of numbers. Now we can do weddings for 40 to 120 in the palace, from 150 to 750 in the marquee. Now the marquee is a semi-permanent de Boer structure. The problem with when you say marquee to people, they think of some flappy side, sort of coconut matting, summer structure that's been put up. This certainly isn't that. This is a permanent fixture and it's fully self-contained. Has its own bar down there, its own dedicated kitchen, fully heated and fully air conditioned. So throughout the year it can be used. Numbers wise, it's incredibly versatile. You can go up to 750 for a reception. As far as the actual venue is concerned, because it's not bespoke, you can change it, you can set it up exactly as you wish. You're really hiring a blank canvas. We have a total of 11 rooms in the palace and they are yours exclusively. Really the unique selling point of the building is the whole palace is yours and that's something we've done from the outset, whether you're hiring the palace or you're hiring the marquee. The focal point of course is the Great Hall. It really is a stunning room and every bride-to-be can't help but fall in love with it. So here we are in the magnificent Great Hall which really is the heartbeat of the house. We can accommodate 60 to 120 in here for a sit-down wedding breakfast and it is a tremendous room with so many features a couple of which, this beautiful Italian marble fireplace, fantastic chandelier from a chateau in Paris, and the walnut wall panelling, just to mention a few. Our catering here is all in-house. We can do Asian, African Caribbean, and European cuisine. One great thing about this venue is that you can also pick your own bespoke menu. So if you don't want to pick something off our menu selector, we're quite happy for you to devise your own menu. Maybe it's something that means something to you and your husband. We have an incredibly talented team of chefs here. All our catering is in-house. Uh, however, we do allow you to bring in your own outside caterers in the marquee, as long as they conform with health and safety, public and employers' liability regulations. What I will say about our chef is he's incredibly talented and he can offer diverse cuisine, European, African Caribbean, and even Mexican, which is one of his specialities. He's part of my team that was here for the Queen's Golden Jubilee in July 2002, and I really do think that speaks for itself. Other areas in the palace include the lecture room and library, which are fantastic lounges, and they work really well for the older generation, a room to retire to if they don't want to be in the hubbub of the disco, which of course is in the Great Hall later on in the evening. We also have the dining room, which is a popular room for the evening buffet, which looks out upon the south lawn. We're now entering the lecture room. Uh, this is a room that your guests would congregate in after your wedding breakfast. So for tea, coffee, petit fours, and the like. You may find that you have champagne reception, after your wedding breakfast, we would then turn the Great Hall round ready for your evening entertainment, your band and your disco and so on. The great thing about this room, the library, is it works really well in conjunction with the lecture room. It can be used as a lounge, alternatively, with a bit of imagination, you can have a casino table in here, you can have a chocolate fountain in here, there can be activities for the children. It really is a fantastic and adaptable room. So here we are in the morning room bar, probably the most popular area for obvious reasons. Guests would congregate in here on arrival just prior to your civil wedding ceremony. We'd then take you through to the winter gardens for the civil wedding ceremony. The bar really comes into its own of an evening. 
It's a fantastic area for photographic opportunities. It's a great space. We've got wonderful views from in here as well. We can run the bar until midnight for you or with an extension until 1am if you really want to go on until that hour. There's two types of brides, those that basically want to organise the whole thing themselves and those that don't. For those that don't, we can organise the whole experience for them. Now whether that be flowers with our Florist Morris Hyde, whether that be car hire, the cake, the, whether it be the DJ and band for All Star Entertainment, the chocolate fountain, casino tables, any element of the wedding we can organise for our preferred supplier list. We have a fantastic videographer and photographer on site, 2020 video. They know the venue intimately, which means they can get the best shots of the day, both inside and out. So here we are in the chapel, and this really is a point of no return. Once you're in here, you're getting married. We can accommodate 90 to 110 people in here. We can provide you with a string quartet, maybe even a harpist, or even someone playing the flute. It's a lovely venue for what is really the most important vows of your life. It goes without saying, the palace is incredibly grandiose and very opulent, but what I feel really sets us apart are a number of factors. I think we're a very affordable venue, and I think we can tailor make packages financially to suit your needs. I think we're also extremely flexible. A lot of venues that you go to don't give you the level of flexibility that we do. And by that, I mean that you can actually change the package, you can incorporate certain elements, whatever the bride and groom want. Each package is tailored accordingly. It has to be functional as well. Again, a lot of venues, particularly listed buildings, National Trust properties, won't allow you red wine, won't allow you certain sources on dishes for fear of marking the upholstery. It certainly isn't the case here. And finally, and probably most importantly, is we're a very personable venue. Our staff are incredibly fastidious. They work very hard with each client, and every client is different. And we're very proud of our reputation, and I think that really does make us the ultimate wedding venue.